to this month's edition of CCTV's Commissioner Corner. My name is Lucia Campriello. I am your host for this evening's program and also uh, represent the um, school board coming from Ward 5, which is Burlington's South End community and home to Champlain Elementary School. Um, this evening, I am so thrilled to have joining me tonight, Krisha Thapa. Mm -hmm. um, who is our newest student rep on the school board and joins Isaac Doggett, who's been serving now for about a year, um, as well as Felipe Vivanco, who wears many hats as well, including um, wrapping up a term as the very first Office of Equity intern. Um, and so these two uh, students are two of so many wonderful, um, incredible Burlington School District students who are doing some really wonderful things, uh, both in the district, um, personally in their own professional careers, in the community, and so much more. And so we are excited to have a conversation to get to know them, um, to learn a little bit about their experience uh, traveling through the district as students. Um, and as representatives in the various roles uh, that you all hold, as well as hearing a little bit about what uh, Felipe especially is up to next as he is a graduating senior, wrapping up a successful career as a student here and on to um, some exciting things affiliated with the district too. So um, we've got about 25 minutes for the program um, and we will make sure to share this resource out with folks. Um, electronically via YouTube, which is a great way to catch up on uh, previous programs, um, as well as tune into this uh, segment at your convenience. And so I think without further ado, let's get right to it. Um, Felipe, I'd love to start with you. Okay. We had a chance to meet um, just a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. I had the good fortune of attending one of three equity workshop series yeah. that were student led and student hosted. and. That's where we met. Yeah. Um, you were one of several students who participated in that event, and um, I was so impressed with uh, a few things about the particular workshop that I had a chance to be a part of, most especially the student leadership that I mm. saw on display. And so um, I would love to hear a little bit more about your experience as an intern, but before we get into that, just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you live, um, how, wh which schools you attended mm -hmm. um, within the district, and um, perhaps tease us with a bit of what you're up to after you graduate. Okay, yeah. So my name is Felipe Vivanco. I attended Edmonds Elementary and Edmonds Middle School. Um, I live in the Hill section of Burlington near UVM and uh, I plan to work at IAA next year, part of the student support staff as a behavior interventionist. That's amazing. Yes. Congratulations thank and thank you so much for your continued engagement and service with the school district. That is just so incredibly exciting um, that the pathway was available and your interest was uh, there and that mm -hmm. you're, you're going to become a part of the team in this new and different way. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Krisha, before, before we dive in a little bit more deeply, let's um, turn it over to Krisha for a brief moment to introduce yourself. I'm so excited to begin serving with you on the school board. Um, we talked a little bit about the role of student rep when Isaac visited us, but I would be especially interested to hear from you, um, from your perspective, what especially um, drew you to serve in this new capacity. and. We can also explore similarly which schools you've attended in the district, and um, and then we'll take it from there. Okay. <clears throat> well, I went to IEA, and then I went to Edmonds Middle School. Um, so with the school board, uh, Tom actually reached out to me because I was part of his advisory group, and he asked me if I wanted to join, and I was really open to it because I, I mean, I actually didn't know what the school board was before, so I got looking into it and. Um, Isaac was really helpful. He showed me a lot of like the like ropes of it, I guess, like the little details. And I've only been to two meetings so far, and so far they've been pretty good. I've enjoyed them at least. Um, I don't know. I th like I like giving my feedback, and I like hearing what's going on in the school because I've never really experienced it like this before. Where, like I hear everything. That's awesome, and I know another hat that you wear is um, as a student government representative, is that correct? Yeah. I would love to hear a little bit more about that. Tell us about how long you've been serving and um, maybe what was appealing about that role as well. 
So. If it's maybe it's the same as serving as school board rep, and and maybe not. Student government was definitely different. My sophomore year, I really just wanted to find my voice because freshman year, I felt like I was so like behind everything and. Sophomore year, I really rised up, and like with the form of new student government, I was like, I really want this representative role. Like, I would really like to have my voice heard, and I ran for it, and I eventually won. And um, I think representative roles are very low key, and I'm hoping for like a bigger like improvement next year for representatives. But right now, I think it's been like chill, and like they we have done like a good amount of work in student government. Awesome. We'll come back to some of that work in just a minute. Um, so Felipe, tell us about um, the role of intern within the Office of Equity. It was mm -hmm. brand new to me, um, yeah. what I learned of it, and I'm curious to hear more about your experience in that role yeah. and what you know about plans to continue that role in the future. Um, just give us a little, a little bit of context, paint us a picture. Okay, so it all started um, last summer when I did the Summer Racial Justice Academy and it's run by the Office of Equity, Autumn Bangora, who um, at the beginning of my senior year, after I had, you know, had that experience, I reached out to her, I was like, I don't have many credits to do, I have so much free time, how can I um, be, work with you? How can I be part of the district? And she was like, let's see what we can do. So we sat down and we just drew up a contract pretty much out of nowhere, like she, it was based off of, you know, she employs a ton of students based off some of their contracts. Um, but it's something that is completely new, completely different. Um, and I, I think the plan is to hire more interns for the Office of Equity next year. Um, and then also keep me on maybe doing some after school stuff, um, cause I'll be at IA hopefully. But basically, it's, it's a whole lot of stuff. It's you, you do wherever they need you, that's where you go. Um, and some of it is like directly working with the students and offering support and whatever you can. And then some of it is like planning lessons, um, going to meetings, just being like a face that people can be like the Office of Equity, or um, some community outreach, yeah. It's, it's a whole lot of stuff. Awesome. Is yeah. there any particular aspect about the work that stands out to you as something you especially enjoyed or something that really challenged you in new and different ways? Um, mm -hmm. Or I don't know, any highlights at all that, that you'd love to share? Yeah, I found that I love working with kids. I, it wasn't really like a part of the job that I, like at the beginning, it wasn't really what I envisioned, but um, after like halfway through the year, I was put in IEA and then SA and then Hunt. Um, and I just kind of warmed up to it and I was like, wow, this is genuinely so rewarding. Um, and half of the time I go there, it's not even for the students, it's for me. It's cause like, it genuinely just brings me so much joy seeing like offering that support that a lot of teachers don't know how to give cause Frankly, we have a lot of white teachers in this district, and they can't relate to you know the BIPOC community that is an IA and SA over half the population, um, and I feel like I can offer that support as you know as as well as I can. Um, but yeah, that was really a part that I hadn't really s thought I would like, but I was like, wow, I gotta work in a school district. Like I can't not so. That's awesome. Well, I'm so excited that you all have found a space that feels like it will continue to nurture this passion that you've discovered. Mm -hmm. um, and I also love that um, you know your initial interest in the work grew out of a personal experience that you had within yeah. the Summer Racial Justice Academy. Yeah. Um, and I you know have had a chance to um, view a lot of content produced by you and oh, other yeah, yeah. students um, from last year's program and look yeah. forward to keeping in touch with this year's program, which I know was oversubscribed yeah. from an interest perspective and continues to be, it's a newer program and continues to enjoy um, early success, which is really exciting. There's obviously a need, there's an interest, um, and I will look forward to following the program um, over the summer. But just yeah. really love that arc of, um, 
you know, finding a space that was interesting to you personally and nurturing that interest and growing it into an opportunity that models for other students, not only opportunities um, for students to connect in new and different ways within um, our schools, um, but then also discovering this additional layer of leadership, which is fantastic. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. It's Thank super you very cool. Much. Nice. Um, Krisha, tell us a little bit more about um, some of what, I, I guess, some of what the highlights for you have been within your career as a student. So it doesn't need to be necessarily specific to um, the two roles that we've talked about, but, um, you know, and it can be, but uh, perhaps something else that stands out to you as a pivotal kind of moment in your career so far through BSD that has either brought you joy, uh, similar to the way Felipe described, or has been challenging or specifically rewarding? Um, well, this year especially, like, this is like what I said earlier, is like the year I found my voice, and I feel like I've been really open with more of my peers. And I just, I feel really rewarded this year. I'm like so happy, and like, I feel like I've gotten to like do everything, and I've balanced my life out really nicely this year. And while there was like some like lower points, I felt like I got through th through those times really nicely. Like especially this year, like being a sophomore, I like really tried with my rigorous classes, and I ended up with high honors. So I'm very happy about that. And I've been just trying to strive for like a really, I guess in a sense like perfect, but also not perfect. So yeah, that's awesome. Well, and I know. Um you talked a little bit about some of the ways that you've lent your voice as a student uh, to various conversations. And I wonder if you might share a bit more detail about what it's like to participate on the Superintendent Student Advisory um, Committee, which is such an awesome additional way that um, you know, your voice is present, um, and also just that immediate interaction that you're able to have um, with Superintendent Flanagan. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I first joined, it was like through some friends, and it was through like international club. And with that club initially, I felt like I really felt like myself because I was surrounded by so many people of color, and I've never really felt like that. So when I was in the superintendents, it was really similar. So then I felt like I actually got to express my feelings as someone like being a person of color, and then my like problems with student government because like although I liked it as well, there was a lot of problems that I felt like needed to be fixed. And I think I really got my voice in there. And like a lot of student, student government was really run by like white women, I guess. And it's like I really wanted to express like we really need diversity. And I think at the start of the year, there really was a lot of diversity. And then it kind of just got scared out. So I think we really need to just bring that back. Awesome. Well, both of you clearly share uh, um, interest in activism is one way to describe um, what it sounds like you both do a lot of as students and as young community leaders, both in your school community and more broadly in your community. Um, and we're so grateful to you for doing that. And I think something that I've always appreciated and why I'm so especially excited to spend a little bit of time with you both this evening is that um, students are the heart and soul of our school district. Um, we've got some incredible teachers. Every one of our teachers and staff and faculty members are incredible as well. And really um, there to respond to and provide the quality education that um, we aspire as a district to provide to all of our students. And so it's especially important to hear directly from students and incorporate student feedback and student experience um, into everything we do. And it sounds like you both have had um, interesting and different opportunities to do that and that you've sought those opportunities out and I'm so excited to hear that there are opportunities and also that um, you know folks are not shying away from problem solving because I think that's ultimately what we're all here to do together in whatever role we hold um, within the district is problem solve together uh, towards sort of that north star of quality education for every student um, and so it's exciting to hear some of the ways in which you all have been able to do that. So I know that, um, let's see, we are, we've talked a little bit about what you all have been up to as students. I wonder if you might wanna share, uh, you've got sort of a career transition happening and you are entering 11th grade, so you'll be fully halfway through your high school career in a matter of days. Um, I wonder if you both would like to share a little bit about sort of what's next, either what you anticipate, what you're looking forward to next, um, 
some of what you hope to accomplish in your new role and same questions for you as a as a junior who is entering um, junior year with having found her voice and um, having embraced spaces to lend ideas and make change happen yeah um, so I am going to be working at the Summer Racial Justice Academy this summer instead of being a part of it. I'm going to be facilitating the middle schoolers, which get a little rowdy. Um, but I'm really excited for it. I think it's going to set me up nicely for my uh, BI role next year. Um, I feel like kind of. I don't know. I'm a little. I'm. I just turned 18, so I'm definitely pretty young. Like. I think having a little bit more experience and kind of more like strict, strict like you can't do that, uh, like just stop um, kind of interaction with students. I kind of need more of that because um, I've I like my mentorship role at the schools is kind of all about positive reinforcement. Like I don't really talk. I don't really tell the kids to not do something because we want only positive relationships. So I think that's going to set me up really nicely. Um, I also, um, there, there's a summer camp. I hope maybe I can get a job there, I don't know. But I just really am trying to make as much of a difference as I can over the summer. Um, and then next year at IEA, um, I'm, I really hope I can get that job. I'm so excited. Like, I've already had like a lot of conversations with um, the principal, my coworkers in the student support room, um, and they were like, "We want you here. We think you would be a valuable asset." And I like they're all great. I, I staff are some of the best ever. I love them so much, and um, the students as well. Like I have one student I'm assigned to, but yet I find myself making relationships with everybody. Like the little, the little kids, they're so cute. Always like. Who are you? I'm, like, I'm a mentor, you know? And they're like, wait, can you be my mentor? That's not really how it works. <laughs> but, you know, I'll hang out with you. You know, I'll get you some fidgets or whatever. But, yeah, um, I think I can really make a big difference next year. Um, like offering mental health support and um, just support for all these kids. And specifically, um, young boys. I feel like as a young man, the schools kind of failed me. Um, and there are a lot of white women who are like student support and principals at IAA. And so many of them are like so many of the students are young black, y young black men. So it's like, like, where's the representation? You know, so I think I can maybe tap into some of that and offer that support in even a small way. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And I can see so clearly how um, your experience is rolling directly up to the strategic plan that the district is moving forward. You've mm -hmm. both talked about um, representation from a, a racial equity perspective, um, as well as a handful of other things that, uh, to me, sort of I hear immediately um, which of the core values um, within the strategic plan those are connected to that we're moving forward. And absolutely, we, I think, have a really strong plan in place and and, um, committed leaders and students throughout the district to moving that plan forward, which includes uh, diversifying um, teachers and staff and um, ensuring that teachers, the adults in the buildings um, uh, are as diverse as the students in the building. Um, so thank you for contextualizing some of the very real experiences that lend to both positive and negative outcomes for students um, and especially for um, you know dialing into that work and and thinking about how you can be effective as a change maker in that space both of you um, particularly as it relates to these you know big broad goals that we have as a district that we're committed to moving forward with urgency I should note mm -hmm. um, it is it is work that is both timely and also I think everybody agrees that we can't operate in that in that way of, um, you know, it takes time. Of course, change takes time, but we do need to move with urgency, and I think we are and are supported, too. So I'm optimistic about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
and you tell me what tell me what you're excited about um, Krisha in both your summer break um, what you're getting up to and then what you're looking forward to most next school year well mine isn't as fully fledged but um, just getting out there more because I really don't know what I want to do after like high school and like I really would like to kind of like solidify it now and like maybe I won't and that's all right but it's like I really just trying to put myself out there and trying to see like what I like because like right now I was thinking of like doing like aerospace or something like that and I think it's cool but it's also like will I be happy so then like I really want to balance like money but then also like I also want to be happy in the career I go into so it's balance. That is such awesome perspective, and absolutely, I don't think you need any guidance or advice from anyone around you. I think you've nailed it. That balance is essential in life, and so I love your approach of um, you know, finding ways to experience as much as possible so that you can identify early what it is you think that will tru truly bring you the most joy and happiness in life. Um, and that really is, you know, that's the goal, right? Um, and so thank you for kind of acknowledging that early. You're very wise to do so at such a young age. Um, and, and I think that, um, you know, the high school and technical center have plenty of those opportunities. Um, and hopefully you're finding that and hopefully you will continue to find that throughout your career, um, that there really are ways to experience a little bit of everything um, and figure out kind of what is the most exciting path for you to pursue um, after college. So I hope, I hope that your, your career continues to be diverse and rewarding um, in that way. Um, great. Well, I wonder, I'm going to toss out a completely open-ended question for us to explore together, but um, what haven't we talked about yet that you think might be of interest? And this can be like, you know, just casual opportunity to get to know something that generally wouldn't come up in a formal conversation about either one of you or um, something else that you feel like we haven't talked about and you would just love to share with viewers. Mm. I know it's a big, it's a big like, you know, random question to throw out there. I mean, I really like what you said about like mental health and I think after COVID, I think the school really needs to hone in on that because like, I remember as a freshman, I don't think I was like really there at school because like I was so disconnected from everybody and like it, like middle school we did have like little pods but I still felt so disconnected so then when you're in like freshman year, you kind of stay in that little like group and like that's what I was so scared of was like leaving security and just like going out and then it's also just like helping students with their needs because I feel like during the winter when there's not a lot of sunlight like I that was when I was like really like just sad I guess and it's like I don't feel like I had any support from the school and like I would just like more like I guess help from teachers and like understanding that some students like really like can't like function as well because like even during this at the end of the school year this year I felt so burnt out and I was like I'm trying so hard to do this essay and I I communicated with my teacher and he was really understanding so I just seeing more of that would be really helpful that's great thank you yeah it's interesting I think um you know, we were chit-chatting a little bit before we got started and just um, understanding sort of, Felipe, your experience as a freshman in our former high school building versus, you know, filling out the remainder of your career in downtown yep. Macy's. And then, Krisha, you entered high school during the lockdown, the year of the lockdown, um, right? And so have only known downtown BHS effectively. And um, you had mentioned also just at the beginning or while we were chit-chatting before we got started that um, that freshman year was a really kind of different feeling year than this year has been. And you alluded to that again with sort of some of the transition that you've made personally and some of the ways in which you've discovered new spaces um, to be in. I wonder if there are other, um, just to kind of pull on that thread a little bit more, are there any other things that you note that were particularly helpful in um, supporting you to find ways to reconnect or and and um, and also whether it was you know j simply that we are in this downtown facility and everyone's got their feet underneath them and um, the walls are higher and other things we were chatting about um, that support sort of a, a better kind of community experience I'm curious for your your thoughts on both of those things I think my support just came from 
joining like clubs because I wasn't in any clubs my freshman year and then I was just like I was very alone I felt like yeah. and then when I was joining clubs like I really wanted myself out there so then when I joined international especially like I felt so open I felt so just welcomed and I like really recommend people joining clubs as like cliche and like oh everybody says that but it's like you really should because you do find a sense of community and I really like recommend people who feel alone just to like get in there because I think you'll definitely find someone. Yeah, well, and I think the social emotional connections that you're establishing with peers and doing so both in classrooms as well as in your extracurriculars, whether they are clubs or student government or interning, whatever it is, all of the different ways beyond the academics that you all have opportunities to participate, it's so, so important and speaks directly to some of the mental health experiences that we know students are having um, throughout the district. Felipe, I'd love to toss it over to you for the last word on that open-ended question. Um, I don't know. I mean, kind of, I guess, pulling on like the mental health more. Um, I don't know, like, I have a 504 for my um, mental health and it was just like very hard to get and it took like four months and it was like in within that four months like so much could have happened and I just didn't have that support I don't know but um, I think w like once I had it and once I you know, like made it known to like my teachers and everybody that like you I need to have like whatever and what that was in my plan um, the support was there definitely um, and like, I don't know, I just find a lot of students are like f afraid to ask for help. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in general are mm -hmm. afraid to ask for help. Mm -hmm. So I guess don't be afraid to ask for help, I don't know. But it is, it is, it was really hard to like admit that like I needed a 504 mm -hmm. and like I needed support. It was, it was pretty difficult, but um, after that it was, it wasn't smooth sailing, but you know, I got I'm here. Yeah. I'm gonna graduate, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, um, I think it can be so empowering once you unlock that opportunity for support, mm -hmm. and uh, it is a huge deal yeah. and very personal. And so I can appreciate that, um, you know, taking that very personal experience into your school can be intimidating. And yeah. I think that's um, obviously an example of growth on your own part, but also really happy to hear that once um, you were able to advocate for yourself and the school was able to respond to your advocacy that the services were in fact yeah. available to you yeah. um, and, and did support you to have a successful conclusion to the school year. But you're absolutely right and that's helpful feedback to hear as well. Yeah. Um, just the time that it can take sometimes to navigate these processes. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we are just about at time. I, I want to echo your public service announcements that each of you embedded into that final question of, um, you know, reaching out and engaging in clubs and activities and extracurriculars that are available, um, both as opportunities to explore interest um, and discover new interests, um, and also as opportunities for connection with other students, um, with peer groups, with folks you might not necessarily find yourself in a room with. Um, folks you ac actually really want to find yourself in a room with. Um, all of those are such um, important and enriching opportunities for students and so I love that you both champion them and thank you so much for raising your hands in all the ways and um, serving with all of the many hats that you wear. Um, terrific. Well, I think we are at time. I, um, again, just want to thank you both, Krisha, Felipe, so, so grateful to have spent the short bit of time with you this evening, but I know that we, our paths will continue to cross ours most immediately in the boardroom and hopefully ours um, within the Summer Racial Justice Academy program um, this summer. Uh, thanks so much, viewers, for watching. We'll, again, be sure to share a link. You are also able to find us on CCTV's website. Um, otherwise, I will just note that we are taking a hiatus for the summer and so we will return in September um, but until then huge thanks to our teachers our staff our faculty and our students for wrapping up another amazing school year um, we are so grateful to everyone within the district who makes uh, quality public education possible in Burlington thank you see you soon